it's crazy because the more Starbucks that continue to pop up everywhere, the more the workers get exploited, the more diabetes numbers continue to rise, and the more the third world countries they source their coffee bees from continue to suffer. <laughs> we don't have fair scheduling. Managers don't care about us. We are consistently understaffed, forced to do the job of two to three people. We live in fear of losing our livelihoods. This is a pumpkin spice frappuccino. It has 65 grams of total sugar. Do you know how much that is? 16 teaspoons. Starbucks needs to grow its own beans and not pillage third world countries. What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. Thank you for tuning back in. I'm back with another brand controversy video and this is about Starbucks. And I feel like Starbucks is one of those brands that doesn't need no introduction. If you clicked on this video, you know what Starbucks is. You probably got about five in your neighborhood. Wait a minute, hold on. And I know most of us know that logo, and we know that they sell coffee, whole variation of different drinks. And you can't forget about the pastries. But Starbucks has its dark side too, you know? There's a lot that goes on, and the thing is, the information is out there, it's just not pushed. So, this is why I'm telling y'all. Starbucks considers itself, it tries to make itself like this huge brand that they care about the employees, they care about ethical sourcing, they care about the environment and all of this and all of that. But many trails of evidence point to the opposite. And this is to also expose how a lot of their drinks and pastries are bad for your health. They have terrible labor practices, terrible employee treatment, and unethical sourcing but the thing is a lot of people will hear this and they won't care you know because they love their frappuccino frappe mocha chocolate ariana grande drinks yeah, I'm like that. Okay. Yeah. before we really get into it starbucks has had so many lawsuits and boycotts there's a huge one going on right now and i'm pretty sure y'all know it you google it you know what i'm talking about but i'm not going to really get into that because YouTube is trying to shadow ban channels that really talk about that. So just Google it. It will be the first thing that pops up. Before we really get into all of the dark side, the dark things, the controversies with Starbucks, let's talk about their aggressive expansion. Because I feel like over the last few years, Starbucks has just expanded rapidly. You know, I talked about Crumble and how they're rising. No, Starbucks is the originator of that. I feel like in my neighborhood alone, there's about four and I'm talking about within three to four to five blocks of each other. I'm telling you, Starbucks is expanded so much, you're gonna wake up one day with a Starbucks in your living room. I kid you not. And because of this, Starbucks has just become this global giant all around the world, not just in America, all around the world when it comes to coffees, drinks, and this and that, and you know, they little seasonal dragon fruit this, pumpkin spice that. You know, they add a little razzle dazzle to the drinks. They make them look cool and nice with the ombre effect. It's just a whole big thing that Starbucks has built this brand on that people keep coming back to. Sometimes it's been said that they allegedly make Starbucks in areas that already have local popular coffee shops just to run them out of business. The lowest is what? Zero. All of a sudden they losing business. Sometimes their coffee may have been even better. What do I mean by that? Now coffee in general is not the most healthiest drink, you know, especially when people add a little sugar, add a little cream, it's not the healthiest drink, especially first thing in the morning. But Starbucks is at an ultimate high when it comes to the health concerns. Some, if not all of their drinks, have high sugars, high calories, flavorings, additives that are just not good for you. Especially first thing in the morning. Some people, they make it a routine. They don't even eat breakfast, like a waffle, some scrambled eggs, toast, bacon. First thing they do, is they get their Starbucks, maybe five, six, seven, eight in the morning, right? Imagine that, first thing in your stomach, first thing in your system early in the morning is a sugary 50 grams of sugar drink. Sometimes it'd be the size of one of these M&M cups. Hold up, hold up, hold up, wait. Oh my God, hold up. And this is part of the reason why I stopped personally drinking Starbucks around four years ago. There used to be a Starbucks right across the street from my job, right across the street. I'm talking like a two minute walk. And I remember I was excited to try one of their drinks. It was like the Caramel Crunch Frappe. Caramel Crunch Frappuccino drink they had, right? I was excited. I was thinking about it my whole shift. I'm like, oh, yeah, after I get off work, I'm going to go get this Caramel Crunch Frappuccino. I waited in line, got the Frappuccino. I'm walking out to the train station. 
Don't you know I took a sip immediately after I got a headache? And it wasn't just like a little twinge, it was the type of headache that made me dizzy. So that's when I was like, this is not good. Here are three reasons why Starbucks is harming your health. Both their food and drinks are filled with toxic ingredients. Okay, I used to love these spinach and egg white wraps, but let's look at the ingredients. Soy protein, soy flour, soybean oil, canola oil. I, I could go on. This is not Fuel with K approved. It should be called Inflammation and Toxins for Breakfast. I get it. They are so good, but it's not it. There is an absurd amount of sugar hidden in their drinks. Okay, the Frappuccinos are a given. They have up to 50 grams of sugar. That's absolutely absurd. But Kayla, I'm healthy at Starbucks. I get the matcha without sweetener. But if you see right there, without the syrup, it still says 28 grams of sugar. That's very sus. That's because the matcha tea blend itself has 28 grams of sugar. Matcha lattes are not Fuel with K approved. Their coffee isn't organic, so if you drink this every day, you're essentially drinking a ton of pesticides in your cup. Ask yourself this question. Why is it that you are spending your hard-earned money to poison yourself? Take a look at the ingredients that are in some of these Starbucks drinks. Even the ones that they advertise are healthy are anything but. There's anywhere from 25 to 50 different ingredients in Starbucks drinks, and each and every single one of them are toxic. This drink contains more sugar than the average American consumes in one day. This is the Mocha Cookie Crumble Frappuccino. There's over 70 ingredients. Some of them I didn't even know. And on top of it, there's 18 teaspoons of sugar just in this. This drink is filled with trans fat, the worst fat that promotes inflammation in the body and can lead to heart disease, diabetes, and obesity. Let's start with the insane amount of sugar that these drinks have. These drinks can have anywhere between 12 to 16 teaspoons of sugar in them. Every one of their drinks, they use lab synthesized natural flavors to make that taste irresistible to you. A good majority of their drinks are full of the following chemicals. Some of their well-known drinks contain potassium sorbate, which is genotoxic to white blood cells and can cause cancer. And lastly, that whipped cream they use to top off your drink contains carrageenan, which is linked to intestinal inflammation and cancer. Starbucks just unveiled three new drinks that sound delicious, but when you see the amount of added sugar here, it's early for Halloween, but it's still downright scary. This is a pumpkin spice frappuccino. It has 65 grams of total sugar. Do you know how much that is? 16 teaspoons of total sugar. And I know a lot of people will look at that, like I said, and be like, oh, well, I'm still getting my drink. I don't care. I mean, I just get the small one. Like I said, in the crumble video, it's all about moderation. Drinking that every morning, every other morning, every other day, just think about it. It's liquid sugar, right? The pastries, obviously, aren't any better. So just take it in moderation. Don't drink that. Don't eat those pastries every day, every morning. Now, you know we had to talk about the employee treatment. Social media pages talking about Starbucks workers uniting for a union have over 500,000 followers. Just think about that. Over half a million people follow those social media pages trying to get Starbucks to get a union for their workers. Many Starbucks stores, you know, over the 15,000 that's in America, many in the world, they have low wages, poor working conditions, and union busting tactics. Unions allow employees to have better working conditions, higher wages, and better benefits. But for some reason, Starbucks just refused to unionize their stores. Like I said, there's been this push for Starbucks to unionize the stores, the social media accounts. With over 15,000 Starbucks stores in America, don't you know it's only 481 that are unionized? Could somebody please make it make sense? And before that happened, certain locations, certain employees that used to try to unionize their stores, Will get fired. Another thing I found ironic is that you know how certain stores, certain companies like the quarter employees, certain names like when I worked in retail, I used to be called like a sales advisor, sales associate. Starbucks, you know, they're known as baristas, but Starbucks corporate likes to call them partners. But I'm like, how are you calling them partners, but you're basically paying them in monopoly money? And that's just a whole big, huge wage gap, just in general. Starbucks aside, I feel like a lot of these corporations and big brands, 
you know, the employees, we're the ones doing the hard work, dealing with the customers, grinding, making sure everything goes right. It's a lot of hard work working in the stores. The people that sit in the office, you know, have Skype interviews and Zoom interviews and send emails all day. They're the ones making 50 to 60 to 80 times the amount. I'm about to quit my job right now. I am so sick of working for Starbucks. They do not care about you. I have been working here for two years and I have yet to get a raise. I am tired. We are so understaffed and I am so stressed out and I just can't do this anymore. <laughs> we don't have fair scheduling. Managers don't care about us. Our manager was supposed to come in this weekend and he took himself off the schedule so he wouldn't be able to be held accountable for calling out. He just literally tore down the schedule that he was scheduled on and put up a new schedule where he wasn't on the schedule. Also, he couldn't have even seen that he was scheduled in the first place because he didn't want to be held accountable for not wanting to come in. <laughs> they don't want to help us. <laughs> we are exhausted from fighting back wait times that go beyond what we can all feasibly manage. We are consistently understaffed, forced to do the job of two to three people. We live in fear of losing our livelihoods because the work environment has been made so hostile and uncertain that we feel we have no way to engage in open and honest communication about our job stability with a company that promotes said hostilities. Our demands are the following. One, we demand that partners be compensated for the loss of hours that have accrued in the last month and the return to full-time hours for those partners employed as such. On a related note, our national petition demanding expanded hours now has over a thousand signatures from partners across the country. Two, we demand that management respects the partner's time when they call out. We demand that management stop giving arbitrary attendance warnings. Four, we demand that management address store cleanliness that affects partners' well-being. Get yourself co-workers who will walk off the job when you're At wrongfully time, fired. At this time, the partners at Dell Chip are going to be staging a walkout in response to corporate unfair labor practices and targeted anti-union retaliation against their workers. We, the partners of Renaissance Center, demand clean plate be reinstated weekly to make sure our location is safe for partners and customers. The 20 hours minimum needed to work for partners who rely on access to health care, proper staffing on mid and closing shifts to ensure that partners have the support needed to complete all required tasks Fair scheduling for all partners, regardless of 150% availability policy. Our concerns be taken seriously and addressed in a timely manner. Fair and equitable access to continued employment, consideration and scheduling for partners with National Guard obligations. Finally, we hope that you hear us and will work with us about these issues. We are prepared to continue to take collective action until our concerns are properly addressed. We have dealt with constant scheduling issues, labor cuts, and understaffed shifts. Staffing issues have not only affected our partner experience, but also jeopardized the health and safety of our customers. I've worked retail, so I know how it is. And it's just like this, a lot of people, some people, especially that haven't worked retail before, they have this idea that it's such a, you know, low meaning job. Oh, you just make coffee all day. Oh, you just flip burgers all day. Oh, you just play with clothes all day. And it's like, no, it's deeper than that. People that really work know the behind the scenes that go inside working in these stores. And I know I've worked with clothes and accessories, working with food and people coffee, people, you know, the caffeine addiction is out of control now. That could be a whole nother video. You mess up somebody order or you don't get them the right this, you don't get them the right that. People going crazy, people cursing them out. I've even witnessed it, like going to Starbucks, having the customers get mad and screaming, ah, ah, ah. You doing all this over a coffee drink? Okay, they could easily make you another one. Like people go crazy over Starbucks. Starbucks has people in a chokehold. And when you work at Starbucks, they have this grand door extensive training where they gotta memorize all those drinks just think about it all the drinks that's on the menu plus the seasonal ones that come and go they got to memorize a whole entire long list of this 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 that two pumps of this three pumps of that five shots of this two shots of that a cream mix it blah, blah, blah. imagine having to memorize 30 different versions of that right and then let's not forget about the crazy customer modifications 
I decided to read this order out loud to y'all to see what these employees have to deal with daily, hourly. Rachel decided to come into Starbucks at 5.54 in the morning and order a drink with ice chocolate almond espresso. No ice. Five shots. Two pumps chai. One pump peppermint syrup. Three pumps raspberry syrup. One pump vanilla. One pump pineapple ginger syrup. One pump classic syrup. Cinnamon powder. Three pumps hazelnut syrup. One pump vanilla. One pump dark caramel sauce. Two raw sugar and a venti cup. Two pumps caramel syrup, two pumps toffee nut syrup, vanilla cold foam, long shot, coconut milk, signature. Rachel, are you serious? Oh my God. Like, just imagine coming in 5.30 in the morning, setting up the store, right? And then that's the first order you get. Not only do you have to type all that in the register, but because your Starbucks store may be one of the ones that's understaffed, you also have to go in there and bank that. And then that's probably not the first order you're going to get like that the whole day. Throughout the day, you might get a simple, oh, coffee this, pastry that, oh, two sugars, one this, one that, la, la, la. Every other order, you get in orders that have that long list of modifications. And people abuse that. People take advantage of it because they know, they I can do this, I can add this, and they can't say nothing. This is their job. This is what I want. It's like, really, Rachel, did you really? What, what was the process to where you realized that was a perfect drink for you. And like I said before, it's not all Starbucks stores. There's some Starbucks stores out there that may have a great team. They may have the great scheduling. You know, the workers don't feel so much pressure. Even during rush hour, they have a system that works. But most Starbucks stores are just discombobulated. It doesn't only start with the management of that store. It starts with the way corporate has expanded the store so fast. Franchise store so fast that... They don't even get like a proper thorough training or they don't even background check the managers to make sure that they really know what they're doing. So they kind of take advantage of the workers they got for that store, for that specific store. And this is happening all over the country, possibly all over the world. Another thing that's happening all over the world is the unethical sourcing practices with Starbucks didn't know yet the coffee farms that supply starbucks were caught once again violating human rights officials in brazil rescued 17 workers from water and slavery at a coffee farm in campus altos including a 15 year old girl and two boys aged 16 and 17 who were forced to work and starbucks just keep brushing off these child labor issues dozens of people did a collective action to get the ceo's attention and spammed his comments with their own concerns and still no word from him now I know that Starbucks didn't think that we were going to let them revive themselves. Now that all eyes are on them, their dirt is being dug up. It's being reported here January 10th of 2024 that Starbucks is being sued for falsely advertising their commitment to 100% ethical sourcing of their coffee and tea products. The lawsuit claims that there has been well-documented instances for years in the retailer supply chain of slavery-like conditions, child labor, human trafficking, and other exploitative working conditions on farms and co-ops where Starbucks sources its coffee and tea. You're going to be absolutely disgusted after you hear how evil Starbucks is. Starbucks uses billions of coffee beans to make sure you get your iced caramel macchiato in three minutes or less. So Starbucks gets their coffee beans from poor third world countries. The problem is growing coffee takes a ridiculous amount of water. Every cup of coffee made takes a whopping 39 gallons. That's why a huge chunk of the global water supply is being used just for coffee beans. The ironic part is that often countries that are the biggest coffee producers are also the ones that don't have enough clean drinking water for their population. For example, Ethiopia has less clean drinking water than almost any country in the world, and yet it still manages to be the fifth largest coffee producer in the world. Conclusion? Starbucks needs to grow its own beans and not pillage third world countries. What? What's going on? Y'all are going to jail! Period! There's so much more with Starbucks, but those are just some of the main points I wanted to hit with the darker side of that brand. Things that they don't really want people to know about. I want to know, what do y'all guys think about Starbucks? Do you have a favorite drink from them? Do you still drink Starbucks? Do you still buy from Starbucks? What are your experiences with Starbucks ordering their drinks? And for anybody that has worked at Starbucks, please let me know your experiences down below. Because this seems to be a variation, but it mostly leans on the negative side. A lot of y'all still going to want your Frappuccino Frappe, Mocha Choco Latte, or on the grind day drinks. But just take everything I talked about into consideration. The next time you visit a Starbucks, 
and things seem a little off. So with that, guys, please let me know your thoughts down below. I can't wait to get this discussion started with y'all. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Thank you for watching and listening. I'll see y'all in the next video.